Hey folks, welcome back. My name is Krishna and in this video I'm going to share with you a really quick way that you can make a killer pencil brush using just the brushes that you get from Photoshop right out of the box. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure the brush tool is activated by hitting the keyboard shortcut B. And then go up to your brush uh, options here and you're going to scroll up and you're going to look for the Kyle Ultimate Inking Thick and Thin Brush. Now this is just one way that you can make a good pencil brush. This isn't the only way. I should probably clarify by saying that this is the way that I make my pencil brush. So I've got that selected. And you can see by default, you know, with the black ink, it has this really nice feel to it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust a few parameters. The first parameter we're gonna adjust is opacity. We're gonna take the opacity and bump that down to about roughly 50%. What that does is that makes it, that black look more grayish. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the brush's flow. So we're gonna take the flow from 100% to 20%. And what that will do is that basically, think about flow like ink coming from a pen. We're restricting the amount of ink coming from the pen to only 20%. So now when I put my lines down, you can see that as I overlay the line on top of each other, the line gets progressively darker. So this has this nice pencil-like quality to it. You'll also want to check your, uh, your brush um, pressure sensitivity settings to make sure that you're able to get this nice line variation from thin to thick. What's helpful is to have your brush at a decent size. In my case, the Kyle Webster brush automatically defaults to roughly about 25 pixels in size, which is pretty good. So you can use this to go ahead and create some nice sketching, etc. Now, if you want to save that brush for later use, you can either save it as a brush preset or a tool preset. If you're working locally, then it's more advisable to make this into a tool preset. So what I can do is I can come up to the menu that's to the left of my brush presets. And I can go to the cog, I can give it a new tool preset name, and I can just call this pencil brush, and I can optionally choose to include the color. And click OK. So now that brush is gonna be available to me, right? So now what I want to do uh, is I wanna make a shader brush, a brush that I can use for shading purposes. So. We can also make that brush from one of the existing brushes that Photoshop includes out of the box. We're going to go back up to the menu here and we're going to choose under general brushes. We're going to go ahead and choose soft round pressure opacity and flow. And you can see the brush size is pretty small when I try to, it gives me this kind of a, you know, soft, um, you know, line. And what I want to do is I just want to bump the brush size up. So roughly about 150 and you can see that as I continue to repeatedly make marks over top, it gets progressively darker. And let me show you what we can do with this. If I use the rectangular marquee tool, just to go ahead and create some bounds, one good practice exercise would be to take that shader brush, make it just a little bit larger than your uh, selection. So I'm going to use the right bracket key to make it just a little bit bigger. And I'm going to start by creating a gradient. So this is gonna be white. And as I progressively get further away, I wanna make it darker. So let me just make this a little bit bigger so I can go a little bit faster. So we got black. And as I move from the right side to the left side, I am making a conscious effort to reduce the amount of pressure that I'm applying onto the stylus. So it's gonna be dark over here. And what you're really looking for is the ability to create a gradient without seeing any kind of striping. In other words, lines, like there's a little bit of a line here. So I'm gonna to try to blend that out. And get this as light as I can. So you're going from white to medium to dark as you're working and that's something that can be helpful. It's not, this isn't totally perfect, but you get the idea. It's going from light to dark. So 
You can also save that brush by again, going up to your tool presets. You can click on new tool preset. You might get a dialog box that says, would you like to save this as a brush preset instead? Um, I just hit no. Uh, and I'll just type in shader brush here and I'll click. Okay, and I've already got a shader brush, so I'm not going to save that as a preset. Now, another important bonus fact since you've been watching this long is if you want to save an existing brush, let's say that I have some brushes that are already saved in my brush preset. If I open up the library, so if I go to window and I choose libraries, I'll drag this window over here. And if I open up my brushes panel, You can go ahead and make a new library by clicking plus. You can say create a new library and you can give it a name. You can call this brushes and hit create. And what you can do is if you save something as a brush preset, not a tool preset, you can drag the brush from the brushes panel over to the libraries panel. Now I've got an M1 Mac and this does not work if you have a later model Apple Silicon Mac, but if you have a Windows box or you're running an Intel machine, you should be able to drag and drop your brushes into the libraries folder. Now, the benefit of doing that is it allows you to shoot, use that same brush across whatever machine you're currently logged into through the Creative Cloud. Unfortunately, it does not work on the M1 processor Macs yet. So if you have an Intel based Mac or if you have a Windows box, you should be able to save those brushes out. Now, why did I save my brushes out to a tool preset? It's because when I'm working locally, I like to be able to have quick access to my brushes and a tool preset allows me to do that versus having to traverse the entire brushes um, panel to see if I can find the right brush. I have to go through a lot of different brushes here. I suppose one can make an argument and say, well, you can organize your brushes into brush folders and so on and so forth, but you know, I really don't do that. So if you found this tip to be useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up so other folks can find it. As always, thanks for watching the video. I'll catch you in the next one.